What's up, barbarians? Today, I have tried the upheaval barb. There is two ways to do upheaval. You could use bash to proc upheaval, or you could do mono upheaval. This is the mono upheaval build, and we are going to do pit 77. All right, I really love the idea of a mono upheaval build, where you just stand in one spot and spam, 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 spam. And that is literally all you do in this. The only skills you really use are the Ancients, the Odd Ground Stomp, and Rallying Cry. We, we do have Challenging Shout, and that is only if we need it. There's going to be times where we are going to need a little bit more damage reduction, but for the most part, you won't need it. And we do have Ground Stomp in for two reasons. One, it's a Fury Generator, and two, it also gives us another way to make enemies vulnerable, besides our pressure point. So you're literally going to stand still and upheaval away. And we're going to not stand in poison. See, this would be a time where we're going to need a little bit of extra damage reduction. Good old poison. We're still standing in poison. There we go. Yeah, still standing in poison. <laughs> That's the one thing I don't like. The earthquakes really cover the poison for us. Okay, there we go. It'd be nice if you could still see the poison a little more. When there wasn't an earthquake. That's kind of cool, earthquake on the bridge. Stand still. Let the earthquake come. And just upheaval. The odd time you might need to hit bash just to get a little bit of fury, but for the most part, you really won't have to. And of course, make sure you find big groups. Try to group them up a little bit. It's kind of difficult with upheaval, but... See, we're not hitting the damage reduction die here, so... Let's kind of go on this side. There we go. Really looking forward to the mid-season patch. I'll be putting out a video on Tuesday once we see the patch notes. I'm really curious what they're gonna do. I don't think they're gonna nerf the spirit form. I really don't. I think a lot of people already have time invested and I can't see them nerfing it. But I can see them giving everyone a bump, a little boost, a buff. That's what I'm hoping. If we get nothing, that'll be very disappointing. But with the state of the game and how many people are really trolling on Blizzard for saying like, oh, Barb needs another nerf season six. I, I, I can't see them, I can't see that going unnoticed and them not doing anything. Okay, not enough enemies to upheaval there. We gotta find some more.
There we go. Stand here. Boom. So one thing I like about this build is it's extremely simple to play. It's it's pretty much a one button build. Like you literally just stand in a spot and upheaval everything. Bring out Call of the Ancients for your fury. A little bit more attack speed. But it's like a one button build. I like it. And of course we are using the Hellhammer. I really feel Hellhammer is best in slot now. Just just the stats on it are so good. With wallop. And then we have ranks to upheaval and strength. The burning damage, well, it doesn't really do much in World Tier 4. But when you are playing the early game and you find a Hellhammer, Hellhammer is godly. It's amazing. So the burning effect doesn't really scale very well. As you can see, as we kill these enemies here, you can barely see the damage over time effect. But even if you were to bring this down to World Tier 3, the damage over time effect is quite significant. It's really just World Tier 4 where it doesn't do much. Eight minutes left. And we're just gonna stand here and we're gonna use our, our ground stomp to make her Vulnerable. These are Call of Our Ancients to so make sure we have full fury. And because we have so much life, we can tank absolutely everything. Look at that. Yeah, the ground stomp is a really, really important way to make enemies vulnerable. And that's really important for the boss. There we go, couple more. And she's dead. That was upheaval. I had to go back to town because my character was invisible because we are using the Shroud of False Death. Overall, fun style, very easy to play. If you're looking for a one button build, I would say this is your build for sure. In the helmet, we have the Air of Perdition and we use this over the Ugly Bastard Helm because this gives us ranks to core skills and a 60% damage multiplier, where the Ugly Bastard at best is an 80% multiplier, but you don't get those ranks to core skills. Next to the Shroud of False Death, this chess piece is absolutely amazing. I would say this is the best chess piece over Tyriel's Might. The one to all passives is just huge and it has maximum life and resource generation. This chess piece is by far the best. Next we have the aspect of earthquakes on her gloves with strength, attack speed, and ranks to upheaval. For your tempers on here, you want critical strike damage or overpower damage. I would prefer overpower damage, but I could not get a good roll on it. I actually have already used a scroll of restoration and I have one temper left and that's a pretty good critical strike roll so I decided not to temper it again. And our second temper is upheaval overpower stuns. This will help proc our wall up. We overpower all the time, so we are stunning enemies all the time, and we are making enemies vulnerable about half of the time. So very important to have one temper for upheaval overpower stuns. Area it's bearing, you want one with a greater affix to the Call of the Ancients cooldown. Very important to get that as high as possible. And this is our main source of fury. Next is Yen's Blessing, and you want one with a greater affix on resource generation 
duration if possible, and you want the highest possible of 60% for your skill to cast a non-mobility skill. And this is why when you're playing, you really want to hit only Rallying Cry and Ground Stomp when necessary because we want our, our Yen's Blessings to land on Rallying Cry, which happens most of the time, as that's pretty much the only skill we use, and the odd time we do use Ground Stomp to make enemies vulnerable, which I only use on elites or bosses. Next is the Hellhammer. The Hellhammer, I think, is an amazing weapon. It has amazing stats. Unfortunately, I didn't get a Master Working on Upheaval ranks, but I did get 12 to Wallop, which is pretty awesome. And I also have a maxed out upheaval size, so I can't really complain. And for runes here, we use Lith Tech. Very important that we use the Earthquakes. We aren't concerned with the upheaval ignites the ground, dealing burning damage. This is good for Torment 1 through 3. In World Tier 4, the enemies have too much health, and this damage is very insignificant with this build setup that I have now. Next, we have the Blade of Intercom. These could be two maces if you'd like, but I had a blade that had two greater affixes, so I decided to use this one instead. And here you want strength, max life, critical strike, or overpower damage, with the preference to overpower damage. And you want your temperings to be overpower or critical strike, and chance for upheaval to deal double damage. With this build, I wanted to get two master workings for upheaval dealing double damage. I did only get one on both of my dual wield weapons, which gives us a 64.6% chance for upheaval to deal double damage. You really want this as high as possible. And because we are using the Grandfather and the Hellhammer, you really want to make sure that you have at least one master working with the upheaval to deal double damage as it is very needed. And on the mace here, we have the Sundered Ground Mace. This just gives us another way to, to overpower upheaval and it gives us more damage when we overpower upheaval. And you want strength, max life overpower damage and a temper to overpower and chance for upheaval to deal double damage then we have the grandfather amazing weapon for critical strike builds and for runes we are using pock lack as we have this for our challenging shout so we do get double challenging shout if needed then we have the ring of starless skies i wasn't sure if this ring was going to work because we are using the ring of red furore and the banished lords but surprisingly with this ring i could do higher damage and push it higher than I could if I had a regular ring here. And that was surprising because we aren't spending as much primary resource, and I thought these would not proc as often, but I've noticed without this ring, we proc the red ring every second hit, but now with the Ring of Starless Skies, we proc it every third. Not that big of a difference. And same with the Banished Lords. It really wasn't that different. Definitely use this combo right here. And we use the red ring, and of course this is why we are using the Grandfather. And this is also why we don't need Critical Strike in the build. And the Banished Lords also makes us do more overpower damage. Try to get a master working on max life. Our critical strike chance is 81.5% for a 4,000% critical strike damage and a 3,300% damage to overpower. Our weapon expertise is two-handed axe, and we have this specifically for the boss. I do find we are making enemies stunned more often, but we can make the boss vulnerable more often than we can stagger them, so this is why we take two-handed axe. But if you want to speed farm and you're not doing pits, you could definitely swap it to one-handed mace. And for the skills, we do take three points in bash. In theory, you could, you only really need two. We don't use bash very often, if at all. But if you want to play the version of Upheaval that uses Bash, you will need this third point. Then we take three points into Pressure Point, as this is one of our two ways to make enemies vulnerable. We take three points into Warpath, seven points into Upheaval for Violent Upheaval. With this Mono Upheaval build, we are berserking 24-7, which is why we take Violent. And if you want to use one temper of Bash Cleaves, and use the Bash build to proc Furious Upheaval, you can do that as well. That variant just makes you use your basic skill more. Then when you use Upheaval, it will deal more damage, but you have to use Bash to proc this. Then we take three points into Ground Stomp for a tactical Ground Stomp. And the main reason why we use tactical over strategic is because it also makes your enemies vulnerable for four seconds. Three points in Imposing Presence, three points to Martial Vigor, three points into Rallying Cry for tactical Rallying Cry. And this is our second way that we gain Fury. One point into Challenging Shout, three points into Swiftness, three points into Booming Voice, 
We take three points into guttural yell, three points into aggressive resistance, three points into prolific fury. We take one point into pit fighter to get three points into slaying strike, one point to thick skin to get three points into counteroffensive. We take three points into call of the ancients for a supreme call of the ancients. We take three points in invigorating fury, and we take the trifecta here of heavy handed, brute force, and wallop. And wallop is pretty awesome because of the hellhammer, and we now deal 80% increased damage to Von enemies or stunned. This is why you want ground stomp and points and pressure point and this is also why you want that one temper to upheaval overpowers stuns enemies. For our key passive we take unbridled rage. And for the Paragon board, our first board is Dominate, and you want to take every single willpower node to max this out as much as possible. Our next board is Carnage, where we take Challenger, and right now I have so many Paragon points that I am just filling my Challenger board to get all my stats up. This is definitely not needed, you, I have way too many points in here, but the build is complete and I don't really need anything else. Our third board is Warbringer, where we take Wrath, and you want to take all of the dexterity in this board as well, so we can bump our Red Ring as much as possible. Our fourth board is Bone Breaker, where we take Rumble. And with Rumble, we mainly take this for the additional bonus, so that we stand in Earthquakes and deal up to 50% more damage. And our fifth board is Blood Rage, where we take Crusher. And before I swapped out my rings, I did have my Blood Rage up to a max of 30%. If you notice, we are not using the Iron Glyph, so what we need to do now is I need to rearrange a couple points and to take these points right here. This amount will increase that to about 27, maybe 26, and, that, and that'll have to be close enough. So with the Paragon board, your first board goes into Carnage, then you path to the right for Warbringer, then you path to the left for Bonebreaker, then you path down here to the bottom right into Blood Rage. I really enjoyed making the upheaval build. I thought this was a lot of fun. I feel like this build works pretty well. I could push this build a little further. I'm not really sure how far, considering I do have some of these things maxed out. In order to really push this further, we'd want our mass working to hit on here for ranks to, up to upheaval. And I would want to reset these to make sure I get at least double or triple master workings on chance for upheaval to deal double damage. And I just don't have the mass working material for that. That would be the things that I would need. But overall I'm pretty satisfied with this build and it was quite enjoyable to play and I feel like this is a, just a one button build that's pretty mindless. That's the upheaval build and if you do like upheaval give it a try this season. It is a lot of fun and my next build I'm going to be doing is Frenzy. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.